Benny. Benny. Yo. Did you send my text messages? No. I sent you five messages yesterday and today. You didn't hear no friend? No. Well, then check you. Could you just tell me? I'm kind of in the middle of something. It's your responsibility to check your phone. Okay, but you're standing right there. So it would make a lot more sense if you just told me. Could you please knock next time? Mom, can I get a corner desk from my office? No. Okay, but my PC takes up all of my you don't desk, need so it. it'd be nice if I could have this area on the side just to do my schoolwork office. and everything, and then I'll just keep my Betty. PC and computer. Please don't wear your headphones while you're talking to me. It's rude. Okay. You have a small desk in your bedroom, right? Just move it to your office. You don't use it anyway. But it doesn't work because the, not, the chair is not the same height. It's an adjustable chair. Okay, but what's the big deal? The desk is only like 200 bucks. It's only 200 bucks. That's your problem. Everything. It's only this and only that to you. New TV, it's only a thousand bucks. New shoes cost only a hundred bucks. You know, it only takes you 15 minutes to wash the dishes or clean your room. Here we go. What's that supposed to mean? It means that I know you're about to give one of your grand life lesson lectures. If I don't teach you life lessons, who will? I don't know. School, personal experiences. What personal experiences? 17 years of personal experience. You think that's a lot? No, but I think it's enough for you to leave me alone. How did I raise such a threat? What are you talking about? Danny, I've paid for your education. You don't even bother to do your math That's homework. And I paid for this house. You refuse to do any chores. I, I just took out the trash last night. Yeah, you take out the trash only when it's overflowing and you need to throw something away. Okay, great. What does this have to do with the desk? I'm sick of your being so ungrateful. Un I've provided you with so much and all you know is to ask for more. Ungrateful. I'm ungrateful because I asked for a $200 desk. Yes! I can't even remember when was the last time you said, thanks, mom. You know I just don't have the habit of expressing my thanks verbally, okay? Two words shouldn't determine my gratefulness. I express thanks in other ways. <laughs> really? Like what? Like, I don't, through my actions, fine. If this argument is about two words, I'll try to say thank you more often. Happy? This argument, it's not about two words. It's about your attitude. Why can't you stop taking things I asked for a fucking desk. What did you just say? I said that I asked for a freaking desk. Don't ever use that word when you speak to me. Hey mom, I'm 17. Come on. I don't care. Use it as much as you want with your friends. You say don't it all the time. No, I don't. Okay. Sorry. See? It's like everything I taught you just flew out of the window. Fine. What do I have to do to prove to you that I'm not some lazy, worthless, ungrateful piece of shit? I've never said that you're worthless. Don't put words in my mouth. You said I'm ungrateful, right? So what do I have to do to prove to you that I'm not ungrateful? Stop by washing dishes. I just washed the dishes last night. Last night? That's not enough. How? How is that not enough? I have things to do, Mom. I have tests to study for. I can't be washing dishes 24-7. Since when do you have tests on video games? <sighs> You're always saying that your hard work led to such success, right? Why not just hire a helper? You can afford it pretty easily, and then we won't have to have these dumb arguments about 
washing the dishes. This is the attitude I'm talking about. You think everything in life is given. No. I can just hire this helper, and I can just buy that thing. I'm just posing a logical solution. Because you can't afford it. Correct? You think I got to where I am today by buying all the things that I can afford? No! I only buy things that I need. Really? I don't waste like you. You don't need that purse. What? That's a Louis Vuitton purse. You don't need a Louis Vuitton purse. You could have gotten one from, I don't know, Zara. And? And I'm just saying, your point's a little hypocritical. You understand perfectly the point I'm making. And all you want to do is to win the argument. No, I was just pointing something out. Don't give me that bullshit. Why can't you just listen to me I for once? I am months? listening to you. A lot more than you're listening to me. No, you're I mean, not. It would be a lot you're easier so if you were just manipulating you can't me with lose. every word you say. Is you're this going to happen every you refuse single to be time wrong. we have a conversation? Conversation. What conversation? You don't have conversation with me. You don't spend time with me. You don't eat dinner with me. You only talk to me when you want something. It's like, ever since you enter high school, all you want is to get away from me and be on your own. Why don't you be independent? Make your own money and buy your own fucking desk!
嗯，大家好，我叫陈静，然后现在从事的职业是音乐制作，还有教教钢琴什么的。我眼睛应该说是先天性视神经萎缩吧，就是在几个月之前听说是能看来看去，但是反正就我懂事以后，我有印象的都看不到。我在身边能接触到的朋友，他们都是任何的事物都是用视觉去去用眼睛去确认，对触觉啊、嗅觉啊和听觉其他的的这个这个比重是比较低的。那我看不见的时候呢，其实我就是被迫让我去用听觉、触觉、嗅觉和其他其他感官去认识世界。我觉得对于我来说，它是一个看不见之后，它是一个给我一个另外角度去认识世界的一个。机会。啊，你在什么时候开始接触音乐的呢？其实接触的话，应该说最早就是，呃，三四月份家里就有买那个录音机，就那磁带的那种录音机，我就开始去听一些什么，那时候是粤剧吧，还是还有一些很老的歌什么的，从那时候开始接触。呃，你说学音乐呢，就是从十岁开始，开始学钢琴。一个事情如果是重复了，或者是跟别人相像了，我就觉得这个事情没意思。所以我一直在在追求不同的东西。所以我的音乐，它只能是不一样了，我才有兴趣去做。那它呃不一样的地方就是可能是在于各种各样的音色运用啊，然后就是它的声景切换啊，各种各样的，我觉得它都是不一样的。这个最好是可以用音乐来说明的。我希望我的最终目标之一就是可以玩玩音乐，然后赚钱。我觉得我现在在
喜欢音乐，并且在做音乐这个路上。但是我我自己就是那种对钱这个东西不是很有概念，所以就是因为这个这个点上，我想今年去做一个自我营销，就在线上展示一下自己的可能性。希望可以靠音乐，就是，呃，玩到自己喜欢玩的音乐，还还能赚到钱。这是刚弄的一个原创，还没弄完。除了音乐，你有什么其他的爱好呢？除了音乐之外，其实我最大的爱好就是电脑。我是从。两千年，那应该是十一二岁的样子，我就开始接触电脑。那我觉得我喜欢它的原因，就是因为它会带给我很多很多的我不知道的新的东西。所以我对它的喜爱，很有可能是因为我对新事物好奇吧。电脑可以延展一下，就是手机啊什么的这种电子类的产品，其实是我衣食住行都需要的吧。就是比如说买东西啊，或者是吃东西啊，或者是出去啊，都是用手机去导航啊，或者是一些外卖 APP 这样嘛。然后电脑的话，就是用在我的工作上，就是我的编曲，其实全部都是用电脑完成的。呃，你对那些其他就是也喜欢音乐的人，但是不敢走这条路的人，你会跟他们怎么说呢？呃。其实你这个问题问的特别好，的地方在于，我有很多朋友，很多同学，他就是，呃，就比如说有个女生吧，她在，我是十岁开始学钢琴，她其实是差不多时候，也跟着我一起，呃，学钢琴。她那时候的其实程度跟我差不多，但是她，就是觉得啊，音乐这个市场不好走，啊，这个，经济效益不好，很难。很难很难存活，他不敢去去做一个这样一个选择。其实我觉得，不管是什么人告诉你什么职业好赚钱，和呃什么职业不好赚钱，其实都跟你没什么关系。如果一个东西你不喜欢，他做好了能多赚钱都跟你没关系，因为你做的不好，别人可以做得好，赚钱的是别人。那如果一个东西市场不好，但是市场不好你也可以好。如果你去喜欢它，然后努力去钻研它。你只要做这个不是很好的市场，但是你是佼佼者，你一样能赚到钱。所以我就是希望每一个人，他都能忠于自己的理想，想去做什么就去做什么。那针对盲人，我想说的是，对我来说看不见他，不能把它确定义为是缺点。我自己是不能这么定义的，因为如果是这样，就说明你对这这个事情是自卑的，对自己也是不认可的。你任何的事情它都是这样的，危机危机嘛，是吧？所有的危险跟机会是并存的，看你怎么看它，看你怎么利用它，怎么对待它，它就会是危险或者是机会，两种可以转化。从事一切你想从事的东西，而不是憋屈的去从事一个你觉得没意思的。I think I found a good place to start. Let's talk about Hong Kong's education system. See, on the exterior, everything seems rather dandy, and numbers tend to back this up. Such as the PISA assessment of 2018, which ranks Hong Kong fourth in terms of reading and mathematics and ninth in terms of science. But it would appear these academic rankings have come at a very large cost. Over 40% of local Hong Kong schools don't provide sex ed led by a qualified outsider, and even when they do, the majority focus on heterosexual relationships only. Some students and teachers have had to hide their sexuality, and no one can really blame them. Some 80% of LGBT students reported some kind of bullying or discrimination inside a school environment due to their sexuality. 42% was verbal abuse. 40% reported being socially excluded, and some 14% of respondents said they were sexually harassed or physically assaulted. And when the general public were asked where they believed that the LGBT community faced the most mistreatment, only 9% listed a school environment. I mean, have a look at these articles. A 19-year-old was forced to eat a banana in front of another guy's crotch just because they found out he was gay. 
So clearly, if this docuseries is going to start anywhere, I'm going to start it with life at school. Now let's rewind a bit and go back to the start, where the root cause lay, sex ed. Is it really that bad for the LGBT community? Our school based sex ed almost entirely around biology and around the practicalities of it. There was very little for anything outside of a very, a very straight biological standard of this is what sex is, this is how sex is done. I think in my time, uh, the sex ed was woefully inadequate, under-researched, and uncared for. The sex ed we get in schools is definitely, it's good, but there are many things that they don't take into account, especially a lot of like trans issues. Because I do remember one time someone asked, well, if a boy is born without a penis, then what does that make him? And the teacher said, well, that makes him a girl, which obviously isn't true because your gender isn't defined solely by your genitals alone. Um, when we first were given our sex ed talks in early middle school, um, there was no mention of LGBT issues at whatsoever. Um, they only came up in our senior year, in, so in this past year, um, where they were kind of glossed over with, with a few mentions of how to have safe sex um, with a same sex partner. It's severely lacking in the sense that very little of these courses are, number one, uh, involving anything that falls out of the realm of a general heteronormative or heterosexual sort of relationship. So there's no mention of what to do if you're transgender. There's no mention of what to do if you want to, you know, if you're in a gay relationship instead of a straight relationship. And in that case, that's where I think all sex ed kind of lacks. Like the, the school sexuality education in Hong Kong, um, LGBTQIA plus issues has been missing. So surprise, surprise, the schools have actually neglected sex ed, at least to a certain extent. And it turns out, current government policies allow them to do this. Uh, currently in Hong Kong, there's no uh, official sex education curriculum. There's no official policy that asks the schools to uh, deliver uh, a certain scientific set of sex education. There's only a guideline set up, I think, like maybe more than 20 years ago, and we st this, the guideline hasn't been updated. And it doesn't help that Hong Kong has a rather conservative culture, which means that most local families won't cover topics such as sex ed with their children. Sometimes it's very difficult for parents to, um, to go beyond their own cultural background and then to, um, to go into another culture. Um, so this is the most difficult uh, time, a difficult task for them to do. This leaves students to look elsewhere for sex education. Don't rely solely on school sex education. The students right now, because of the social media, they can learn about these issues. Yeah, I think just searching it up, it honestly does a great deal. I think that there's a, definitely a mixed bag of things that you'll find on the internet. Like, even the dark sites that we're not supposed to be in. It's, for me, I actually learned something there, but I'm not saying that it's good for everyone. You learn from what you're exposed to on the internet, and this can come in many forms as, um, so there are often YouTubers who will talk about LGBT uh, sex ed, and that's quite educational, and I would, rec I would recommend that as a route, although it might be difficult to find reputable sources. There's also the very typical 12-year-old like fan fiction route, which I would not recommend. Yeah, so be careful. Uh, make sure it's not some two subscriber channel, you know what I mean? Like, what is that, you know? It is definitely very fortunate that the internet has allowed information to flow that much easier. This matters a lot, because without sex ed, a lot of people could have misconceptions about the LGBT community. So we have, in our school, we have a clear policy against PDA. And when it comes to a boy and a girl, 
it's very easy. They just tell them to separate. However, we had this one lesbian couple and nobody would stop them. And I think it's because of straight staff who'd be afraid to be come across as homophobic. So they would just turn a blind eye on them and just be like, no, I didn't see it. Uh, until the only teacher I know who once told them, you know, like, hey, can you like chill out before, like while you're still on school site, um, was gay. And that's why he felt like, okay, he was just like, hey, can you like wait until the end of the day? Like, <laughs> This can also lead to LGBT students feeling a little confused about their identity. The concept of homosexuality was not something that I knew existed. And I feel like if it was talked about at school, then th first of all, it would really change the way that I learned about the existence of these things and therefore my perception of it. If I had learned about if I had learned about homosexuality in a very controlled, safe environment, then it definitely, more likely I wouldn't have such negative connotations with it. I actually learned about uh, the notion of a fluid gender before I learned about sexuality. So in my head, boys like girls, girls like boys. When I was 13, I fell in love with a girl and I was like, okay, my feelings for her are so strong. I must not be a girl, I must be a boy. And so I started asking that everyone call me he, but then I found myself really uncomfortable with it because I present myself as very feminine and back then I was also very feminine. And worse yet, this can open up avenues for schoolmates to bully them. There's been a lot of people who give throwaway comments or who might choose to, you know, give verbal abuse instead of any other sort of abuse. And the problem is that with this kind of verbal abuse, it's less likely for people like teachers to really take a stand against it or notice it. So this kind of stuff is very subtle uh, in these, in these uh, communities, but they're still there. So there's still quite a few people who are faced with this discrimination. In younger years, particularly in year seven to nine, there are a lot of cases of sexuality based um, uh, bullying among students going as far as death threats. Any discrimination within our school was deemed as a friendship issue or as a social issue. And this went for not only for homophobia, but for things like anti-Semitism, racism. All of these things were deemed as social issues. It completely undermines the person who's being bullied, their experiences, what they're going through. On a personal basis, I would say, it really affects your sense of self and how you see yourself. But it also prevents other students who are facing similar issues to come forward and makes it seem like it's an okay thing to do. I mean, to begin with, I don't, I don't think uh, any school would say okay to bullying, school got bullying. So, I mean, you know, uh, school administrators, they do have a duty to provide a positive learning environment for all kids, irres irrespective of who they are. So, uh, school bullying, uh, school administrators can do a better job in sending out a very clear message that no matter what, school bullying is not acceptable. There should be a zero tolerance. The students have to face uh, um, sexual prejudice and anti-transgender prejudice and homophobia, transphobia, this kind of issues. So um, under this kind of um, social stress, um, they may have some minority uh, stress, mental health concerns, not because of their identity, because of the uh, the unsafe environment and also um, the prejudice and um, stigma they face uh, in the society. Set aside poor government policies and the conservative culture, it doesn't help that a lot of Hong Kong schools have religious ties and backgrounds. Especially Christian and Catholic schools, they still have a very strict uh, policies on uh, educating the students and teachers about LGBT issues. So we don't talk about um, LGBT issues, especially in some religious affiliated schools in Hong Kong. Because the problem is not just the culture, this is a systemic issue. Many of the schools are controlled by the churches. I, would, I wouldn't say all of them are homophobic, but certainly a good portion of them are anti-LGBT equality because of various reasons, including preserving their privileges. And that's why 
in schools they uh, suppress LGBT minorities and they try everything not to teach what is factual regarding LGBT populations. Especially in religious schools, like there's 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 so much that they're just so closed off to and so much that they're missing out on just because they have certain values that they're too stubborn to let go of. So unfortunately, the outlook is rather bleak because without systemic change to government policies or school administration, the situation will remain as it is. But the least we can do here is offer some advice for those facing adversity right now. Our society demands that we go through trauma in order for us to be valid as who we are, and that's not acceptable. But that will change. But the problem is that change comes slowly, so the pain that you are feeling right now is not something you can control. Find someone who can help you, whether it be a best friend or a parent or a teacher or a counsellor, and that you shouldn't have to live through that because they are telling you that what you're doing is wrong. Try and find other queer people in your school, and if there is no one who is visibly queer, try and find that online and hang on to those connections. I, I don't want to say if you look a little closer you can find them, but that often is the case. There are so many people like you out there. If you don't feel accepted in school, once you graduate, once you go out into the world, you're going to find a lot of people like you. Someday you're going to graduate, you're going to become an adult, you're going to be able to have the freedom to choose who to surround yourself with. To end this, do you have anything to say to the bullies? Talk get hit. off. <laughs> I can't say that, can I? <laughs> um. I, I don't want to say that word, but you. Get a life. I'm sorry. I hope you find peace. Get therapy. Focus on yourself before you focus on other people. I'm really sorry we couldn't end on a higher note, but unfortunately the situation is what it is. Um, but I do hope that government policies and school administration can catch up to the 21st century. Anyways, I would like to thank you for watching this episode of the Doki series. I would also like to thank everyone who helped out in making this episode. That includes all guests who came on to interview, as well as Mansi, Rain, and Isia as a whole organization. Um, it's been a huge collaborative effort, and we still have three more episodes to present to you. So I hope to catch you next Sunday in the East vs. West episode. Hope you take care, and I hope to see you next Sunday. Cheers!
Here she is. Ain't she a beauty? Ventilation's okay in here, but I'd, uh, I'd keep my mask on if I were you, just to be safe. But take a look around. It may need a little work, but you can stay in this garage as long as you need. Hell, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out of here. I'm going to Canada to visit my brother up in New Brunswick. You think it can make it across the country? I mean, once it's fixed? No problem. This is the gold standard, the finest RV ever made. Sure, you might need to work on the air compressor, possibly filtration system, maybe even the plumbing. But the electricity is in the garage, it's, it's good for another month, and you can stay here as long as you want to work on it. You, you have worked on these before, haven't you, kid? Um, no, I haven't, but I can figure it out. I have to. I'll take it. Yes, thank you, thank you. It won't let you down. Good luck. Take care of yourself. Take care of the Airstream. Hello? Dad? Dad! Who is this? Joshua. Who is it? I, I don't know. I can't hear. Um, Dad, it's me, Sam. Sam? I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm coming home. Sam? I figured out is a way you? back. I just need some time. I'm sorry it's been so long. I should have never left. I'm sorry. I miss you guys. She's not there! Sam? Stop it! Sam? Stop it! She's not there! You did this! You did this! She's gone and you drove her away. Why? Why did you drive her away? I didn't do it! You did it! She couldn't stand you constantly trying to protect her. She just couldn't take it anymore. She was tired of being sheltered. I kicked her out because that's what she wanted. You're lying. You're lying. I'm not lying. She didn't want you to know how she felt. She knew it would break your heart. But I'm sorry. I, I just can't take it anymore. I'm sorry.
Deadly riots have been occurring across the country now for 100 straight days. And the national unemployment rate is reported to be nearing 40%. Flint, Michigan is the latest city to declare martial law as residents there continue to defy the governor's mandate. In California, the Sierra fire has consumed 17 million acres and residents in various counties along the western seaboard have been ordered to evacuate. That's our news for tonight. Which WMBC would like to remind viewers to wear CDC approved protective gear at all times. Stay safe, folks. Good night. We have to leave, Mar. It's a mandate. It's not optional this time. We've got enough food to last us a couple of weeks on the road. We can go north. I've heard it's safer there. We can't leave now. Sam is coming for us. I know she is. She'll be here and then we can all leave together as a family. We're leaving. This is not up for debate. You heard it yourself. We have to evacuate as soon as possible. Sam isn't coming. She's safe on the other side of the country. I heard her, Joshua. I know she's coming. We're not even sure that was Sam on the phone. And she hasn't been here for four years. Why would she come back now? We can't stay here or we'll die. Why don't you understand that? I didn't want her to go, Mar. But she wanted to go off on her own, and, and I wanted to support her. If we leave now, she won't be able to find us. We need to wait for her. We need to be here for her this time. Okay. We'll stay and wait for Sam. Thank you. God, it works! It works! Oh my God! Finally! Yes! Finally! Oh my God! I can go home! Oh my God! Thank you.
tone. Hey, Mom. Hey, Dad. I hope you can hear me. Uh, I finally finished getting the Airstream fixed. It's good to go on the road now. Uh, I'm leaving now, so I should be home in a few days. I can't wait to see you. I really miss you guys. Okay. Bye.我一直都以为我仲有时间但我偏偏就不记得了要考虑买你我记得小时候那阵不理是什么日子你都常常煮这些碟餸当我考得好的时候或者弹琴拿了奖那餐晚饭一定是这些碟餸你由预备材料去到落锅煮你都很小心我现
，我知道你会好希望我有似你嘅地方。我希望我有多啲时间，等我可以将呢一切都话俾你听。喂，呢度系殡仪馆啦，系咪啊？哦，准备好啦，好，唔该晒你。系。哦，诶、呃，得我一个咋？好，好，唔该你，好，拜拜。
I love right? you, Casper. You're, you're not. <laughs> you're not serious. I love you, Casper. Oh. Cut it out. Really? I love you, Casper. You're kidding. Casper, stop it. Give me a minute. I'm sorry. Get away Casper. from me. I love you, Casper. You're crazy. Cut it out. No way. Get Are you out. serious? <laughs> I love you, Casper. No, I had not Just give me a minute. Stop it, Casper. I love you, Casper.
這些口都是全部都買到了這個是我們兩個就是因為他 
點會搞到你驚男仔啊？欣，阿欣。嗰、那個係邊個啊？你翻翻房先，我自己再同你解釋。海欣佢佢咁大個女啊，咁啊點啊？唔關你事啊。邊個啊？我估唔到，我估唔到你可以令到佢完全唔記得咗我。海欣，我係你老豆啊！你同我走啊！我有權見我個女噶。係咩？我咁窄令唔係咁寫嘅喎。海欣，海欣。我哋會再見嘅。整個家庭你哋顧住你成長，但係你可以試下唱俾你翻屋企。你知道我唔可以嘅。嚇死人啦！你遲咗三個鐘頭翻嚟啊！冇事啊，你知道咁啱撞咗個舊同學啊，講開咗。下次唔好傾咁嘢嘛，誒換衫啦，食飯。做咩笑得咁開心啊？今日真係去見普通朋友？係啊。唔係男朋友？咩啊？唔係啊。唔通你去見佢？佢、欸，你講邊個啊 ？Jared 咯，邊個嚟噶
，你阿爸啊，同佢講幾句啫，有咩問題啊？你冇事先話俾我聽，咪就係問題咯。其實你同佢佢有咩問題啊？佢嘅人真係好好噶。總之，我唔想你再去見佢。O、okay? K， 我見唔見佢關你咩事啊？喂，你阿媽嚟噶，同埋佢我阿爸。十五年嚟，佢都唔喺屋企噶啦，所有嘢都系我一手一脚做出嚟噶。我做咗所有嘢，都系为咗你好噶 ，OK？ 咁我明白点解佢要走啦。你明啲咩啊？你根本就系一个双面人，一直以嚟净系知道你好嘅一面。<笑>原来全部都系一场戏。边个啊？张老，你嚟做咩啊？你记唔记得呢个波啊？系海欣细细个嗰阵，一齐喺楼下同佢玩。我今日咪系想呢个波佢。你 keep 起咗个波啊？其实咧，平时你呢个钟数唔系应该一系去咗观星啊、camping 啊，一系就唔知飞咗去边度开会嘅咩？你有几好翻嚟啊？海欣啊，我知道爸爸从来都唔系一个称职嘅爸爸。成日挂住去玩啊，观星啊，周围见好多新嘅嘢。我喺呢个家庭里边，我应该站立呢十年嚟，令到你冇呢个咁完整嘅家庭，冇咗应该有嘅同。好对唔住，阿欣，你会唔会想同呢一个咁耐以嚟都冇负过责任嘅人一齐生活？點解唔可以同時間又有阿爸同阿媽，好似一個正常嘅家庭咁樣啊？阿欣，一係就我，一係就佢，你揀個。我揀。I hate the beach. It's almost bearable when you're actually on it, but you can't even appreciate it because you know you are just going to be disgusting afterwards. They're pretty though, aren't they? In photographs. They're especially beautiful in photographs. And you can only see them in one very specific instant that stays forever. But they aren't really like that. Photographs don't show people hopelessly trying to rinse off their repulsive, sand-encrusted feet in the tide, only to realize that as soon as they walk away again, their wet feet are only going to become even more repulsive and sand-encrusted. Well, sure. See, you can't refute me. Well, I can't, but the fact is, I just don't really care about that kind of stuff. I guess I don't think about it until I have to. Yeah, well, beaches are lame. I say it passionately. Passion is underrated. I just mean, when people have things that move them, it's, it's great. It's perfect. Couldn't agree more. I wish more people hated the beach. It overcomes me with elation. It just, it's been ages since I've seen someone who felt 
deeply about something, wanted to talk about it. Someone who felt excited at the thought of it. The world moves fast. Nah. Okay, let's head home. I really want to do some work before dinner. Oh, come on. Let's just be here a little longer. Oh, please, I really have so much to do. Please. Just a few more minutes. A few more seconds. Not thirsty. so much that I want to do. You can do it now. But there's stuff that I need to do first. Like what? Like extra work. So you requested extra work? I want it. Does it sound like you do? I don't know what I want. Stop. What? Just stop. Today's a beautiful day. Don't move. Ouch. What? Nothing. <laughs> then why are you screaming? I'm not screaming. I'm just... You're just... What? You're the one who wanted me to cut your hair. I didn't even want to touch it. I love my hair. 
Okay. Or maybe you're just a bad hairdresser. Wow, someone's feisty today. <laughs> well, it's a rooftop party tonight. You sure you don't want to go with me? I uh, know. It's kind of boring at the parties these days. You're actually being so uptight lately. What happened to our party crasher, gin and tonic? She is dead. It's not like you have anything else better to do. Who's gonna be at the party? So, apparently Jordan's old crush is gonna be there. And? Who is... Duh. The girl who shaved her head because of a boy? Had her heart broken or something. Classic. So you coming or not? <laughs> I'm so happy you came. Mm. Okay. Oh, cheers, cheers. <laughs> mm. I want some wine. Okay. I'm gonna go get some. I, I think I'm fine. You stay here. Okay. Hey. How are you? Hi. Mind me smoking? No. So... Your friends left you alone? And you smart. Unlucky? Do you have a boyfriend? No. You want to be my boyfriend? I don't know if you can really tell. I'm not really a boyfriend type. Wanna try? Mm -hmm. Smoke. No. Don't wanna die. What were you staring at? It's none of a business. Okay. It just seems like you were staring at Casey over there. Casey. Yeah, the short hair girl. Or not a girl, no offense. What are you then? A boy? I'm a man. Why do you identify yourself as a man? Why do you identify yourself as a woman? It 
See? The answer is obvious. So, you want to come over to mine tonight? I have space, if you want. No. The answer is obvious. <laughs> okay. I guess I feel like it. What? I guess I feel like a man. That's why. Good. I saw you staring at us at the party earlier. Did I? <laughs> yeah, you did. Okay, I'm Casey. What's your name? Hello? Do you have a name? Gin. Gin. Do you drink? What do you mean? You know, gin like the drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Has nobody ever said that joke to you before? You are the first one. like my hair. Want to touch it? Feels good, right? It's very soft. Shave your hat for a boy. I shaved my hair for myself. A long time ago, there was a group of frogs crossing the forest together. And two of them fell into a deep pit. And the rest of them kept saying that the pit was too high and there was no way they were ever going to make it out. One of the frogs believed them and fell to accept his death. The other one just kept jumping. No matter how many times the other frogs told him he couldn't make it. And guess what? He made it out. He was deaf all along. He couldn't hear what they said. I 
want to be like that frog. Equal affection cannot be what the more loving one be me. Why'd you leave the party early? Because I wanted to go home. Why? I feel like a normal person at home. You don't feel like a normal person at the party? No one is normal, you know? We're all weird in our own way. You look normal to me.
It's not much as to you I like girls. I'm sorry I didn't tell you before. I just didn't think it mattered. It doesn't. It does. I don't feel like a girl sometimes. Do you know what I feel like? So do you feel like a boy? What do you feel like? This is Georgia. Sorry I can't be with you right now. Leave a voice message and I'll get back to you. Bye! Hi. It's me. I know it's pretty late so you might be asleep right now. Um, I, uh... I'm also kind of surprised that you didn't, uh, you didn't block my number. Um, yeah, so, so I, I'm just calling to let you know that, uh, you know, I, I think I'm ready to talk. And I don't know if, you, if you're ready to talk, but I think I am. Uh, and I also like to say just, uh, I'm sorry for everything. Um, uh, 
Yeah, so so maybe we could meet in person or or, or uh, yeah, meet up, so we could you know discuss this. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, just re return me a call me back if you when you get this. Okay. Bye. This is Georgia. Sorry I can't be with you right now. Leave a voice message and I'll get back to you. Bye! Hi, Georgia. Uh, you know, can you just forget about what I said before? It was way too vague. I said that I, I thought I was ready to talk, and that's unclear because what I meant was that I am ready to talk. You know, I'm sure of it, so... Just call me back. Please, Georgia. Georgia, sorry I can't be with you right now. Leave a voice message and I'll get back to you. Bye. Hey, Georgia. You know, everything I said before, I'd really rather not talk about it over the phone, though. I I'd prefer in real life, if you're willing. I just thought... Uh... And, and I know I must be coming off as desperate here, leaving three voicemails and whatnot. It's just that uh, I, just, I just really want to talk, right? Um... And if you agree, I promise there's not going to be any of that... Defensiveness. All right, no bullshit. All right, I'll just, I'll be a real proper listener. Okay, you can, you can take as much time as you need. You can take five minutes. You can take five hours to talk. All right, and you won't and you won't hear a word from me. Okay. Just, please, Georgia. I don't want you to be a stranger to me. So call me back. All right.
Hi Georgia, this is August, I just wanted to ask how you're doing, I haven't seen you or heard from you in a while and, and that hurts, but if that's what you want then Then that's okay. Just leave me one voicemail and let me know how you're doing. <laughs> 